Hi, my name's Adam, and I'm a student in the Recording Arts and Technology program here in Cleveland, Ohio. I just wanted to demonstrate real quick how to set up a headphone or a cue mix for your talent on Pro Tools. The easiest way that engineers usually set up a headphone mix is just to give the talent a headphone out straight from your audio interface so that they can hear the main mix. And there's nothing wrong with that in certain recording situations, but it's, it's not really what you'd want to do. The problem with that setup is that they have to hear exactly what you're hearing on the main mix and that might not be beneficial for you. <clears throat> for example, if you're tracking drums and I've got a click track here and say they want a obnoxious metronome in the mix and you obviously don't want to hear that. You just want to hear the drums that you're recording. Or if you want to hear something else with the drums, some other instrument, you know, you couldn't do this without setting a different output so they can hear what they want to hear and you can hear what you want to hear. This is very helpful because you want total control of who's hearing what. So I'm going to show you how to set up a headphone mix this way inside of Pro Tools. This will be very similar inside any other DOS. So let's get started. And as you see I have no input set, no input set in here at all because they're already recorded. And I have set my outputs to all to one and two. There's no busting going on in here. It's analog one and two, just to keep it simple for learning. And so let's see. First of all, this isn't really possible unless your interface only has, this is not possible if your interface only has one pair of outputs. The interface I'm using here has multiple outputs. So you would need an, another set of outputs such as analog outputs three and four which is what I always use for my send. That's where you're gonna have to put for the talent to hear. It's gonna be in the send section. So you could use a SPDIF output or whatever is available inside of the interface that you use. But I have this mix open, you know, it's all ready to go and you want to set the sends to analog 3 and 4, if that's what you're using. And you want the output of 3 and 4 inside, outside of your, your interface to be set to some kind of headphone amp. So we, we have Avion amps here. Or if you have a little headphone amp, you know, you set that to 3 and 4. So you want to set the send to 3 and 4 right now you get this little pop-up fader you want to put that up because not gonna hear anything put up the unity or you could uh, you know I usually like starting at the bottom so they're not getting you know, blasted with the uh, audio <clears throat> but um you can do whatever you want setting up the uh, sense for them so right now they are only going to be hearing the ride so and you can see the the audio you know bouncing around in there turn it up again more turn it down again less pretty simple so but you want to have multiple sends you want to have an analog output of three and four on every single send on the session so a shortcut for this would be to hold option for a mac or alt for pc and repeat this step so it opens up a send on every single track. This is their mix, so I usually just go, as I said, um, start at the beginning and go up the channels and add or take away some of the signal. You know, start at the beginning here with the click. Say, how much do you want? You know, so they'll tell me how much, you know, and I'll go down. But you see, it takes kind of a long time to click on it and then, you know, move the fader. So I'm always looking for ways to you know speed up the workflow because i mean just little things like this you know having to click on each individual send and then go to the pop-up send fader and then adjust that you know like wherever the send fader is in the session so i mean as you see 
take it a long time to, you know, go down my list. I got a lot of drums and I started my guitars now just to, you know, add signal. But um, there is an easy way to do this. You want to show your expanded sense so you get an automatic fader on the send. So you won't have to click on you won't have to click on the separate fader itself. It's, it's, it's not here, it is this is not right. It is Expanded send, yeah, in the view, you want to expand send A. That's what we're using. So now you get all these nice little faders. You know, I could just go up, see how much faster it is? Right down the line. How much you need of this? How much you want guitar seven? Guitar eight, you know, like how much do you want? So bam, that's that. Now they're getting levels for everything. You know, every single track in, this <clears throat> in the session is coming to their headphone mix. But there's one more step in order to make sure that everything goes smoothly in the session and say that they are recording, you know, you want to set up additional send, you know, so you're recording them. That's what they're going to hear of themselves, which is very important, which would be different from what you want to hear, which brings me to the one of the most important steps of this, creating a correct headphone mix or cue mix, would be the pre button. Now, by default, all of these sends are set the pre buttons right here. You have to make sure it turns blue. And you're going to see it inside of the, uh, the separate thing. So we have pre inside the separate fader. So you want every one of these to be pre. So again, you want to hit option or alt, hit that P, and they're all pre now. So this is important because the sends are post fader by default, which means that they are affected after the main fader. So if I turn down, let's see. If I want to turn something down and I don't want them to lose signal, you know, I just want to turn something down in the control room. So say I want to turn down the snare. So I want to turn it down because I don't want to hear it at all. Or really low. That's their send right here. Now it is pre. So it doesn't matter if I turn mine all the way down, they're still here in snare. If I make it post, hit unhit that pre button. Wait for snare some more. Here we go. So if I turn that down, they're not getting anything. Because it's coming, you know, it's before the fader. So I have to hit that pre that way. They're hearing the signal regardless of where the main fader is inside of the control room. And that's very important because, I mean, you don't want to turn something down and then they're like, well, where'd my signal go, you know? So, so everything is running smoothly and they hear what they want to hear, whatever amount that might be, and you hear whatever you want to hear, you know? And that's just about it. So I uh, hope this tutorial was helpful. And uh, thanks for listening.